So in this problem, we're asked to find um, a percent of a percent. They say this letter M is 20% of N, and N is 5% of 1,000, so what is the value of M? So one way of figuring this out is, first of all, finding 5% of 1,000. That will tell us what N is. Because once we know what that number is, we know M is 20% of that letter. So we're working backwards. 5% of 1,000. Well, with percents, I, I mean, I have an algorithm for it, but I always go for 10%. That's a strategy I like to use. and Or 1%, and then use that to figure out uh, whatever percent I need. So 10% of 1,000 is really easy because 1,000 is a multiple of 10. And to find 10%, you just divide by 10. That's all you're doing because 10% is 10 out of 100. And let's look at that for a second. 10% is 10 over 100. So that means that any number you have, if you had 100, for example, 10% is 10 times smaller than that. And to, to find this proportionately for a larger number, so instead of 100 here, we have 1,000. We want to find a number that's 10 times smaller than that, which is 100. So I would take 1,000 and divide it by 10. That gives me 100. Now that's that's 10%. We want to know what 5% is. Well, 5% is half of 10%, so um, uh, it'll be half of 100. 100 is 10% of 1,000, and 5% will be half of that. So 5% will equal 50 and we're almost there. Now we know that the letter M is 20% of N. So that means it equals 20% of N. I translated the word is for equals. And here I could multiply and figure this out. Um, what I'm going to do is really find 20% of 50. So again, I'm going to find 10% of 50. That equals 50 divided by 10, which is 5. And 20% would be double of 5, so 5 times 2, and that's our answer, 10. Now, a couple of things to think about in this problem is that we didn't have to work this way. Percents are a really interesting uh, section of math because they use the commutative property. And let me explain what I mean by that really briefly. Um, when you take a number and you multiply it by another number, you can switch the order of those two numbers, and you won't change the outcome. So if I have a times b, that's the same thing as b times a, or 2 times 3 equals the same thing as 3 times 2, which is 6. And that's not too surprising. But also, we have to remember that when you find percents, one algorithm could be, let's try this out, 10% of 50. Well, you could do point 10 times 50. And frequently you'll see that, that the multiplication sign equals of. So if you're finding 10% of 50, it's 0.10 times 50, which is 5. So taking that to the next level, if I was finding 10% of 50, and then I wanted to find 5% of that, I multiply by 5%. I could switch the order. So that means it equals 5% of 50 times 10%. And what that means is that if you find 10% of 50 and then find 5% of that, it's the same thing as finding 5% of 50 and then finding 10% of that. So 10% of 50 is 5. And then... 5% of that, well, 10% of 5 is 5 divided by 10 or a half, and 5% is half of that, so it's 1 fourth. Going this way, 5% of 50 is, well, 10% of 50 is 5, and half of that is 2.5, and 10% of 2.5 is 0.25. Now, why does this work, and what does that mean? Well, Let's look at a picture. So I'm going to say that half of, so 
of 25% equals 25% of 50%. Now, this might be confusing us, but what, what we have to remember is that um, if you're given a bunch of percents in a problem, like the one we were just given, you can manipulate the order and find whatever percent you want. And let's just look at this really briefly. If I have half the pizza pie right here, well, for fourths, I cut my pie again, and I have four pieces. Well, what's half of fourth? Well, here's a fourth right here. That's a fourth. And half of that, I can cut right here. <clears throat> I get this small piece. Well, what's that? Well, if we cut all of the fourths in half, we can see a constant piece because we have to find pieces that are the same size. We realize that's one eighth. If I reverse the process and I find fourth of a half, well, here's half of the pie. And if I cut it in fourths, here the fourths are, I have these little pieces which are also one eighth. So the order does not matter. So in this problem and on any SH SAT problem, if they give you percents, it might be easier to work the other way. Here we found 5% of 1,000 and then found 20% of that. If it was helpful, we could have found 20% of 1,000 and then 5% of that. And I don't find that particularly helpful in this problem, but we have to remember that's an option. Sometimes you might get a bunch of percents and it might be helpful to switch the order of what we're finding first, and it should never matter. Because in multiplication, that's what we're doing here with percents, 5% of 1,000, 10% of 1,000, all these steps. It doesn't matter. What we're really doing is multiplying. We divided by 10 to find 10%, but you can think of dividing by 10 as multiplying by 1 tenth. So we're multiplying here as well, it's, or dividing by 10. Multiplying by 1 tenth or dividing by 10, same thing. And we could have reversed the whole order here and perhaps made the problem easier for us.